militarization of society. And that militarization of society, I think the best example I can give you is that we just had a cricket match in Lahore. And it was a cricket match that our city really looked forward to. And despite terrorist attacks and despite terrorist threats, the government decided, and because of the people's pressure, that we will have a cricket match. And it was so much welcome that you couldn't get seats and you couldn't get tickets. But when that cricket match opened, the first half an hour were dedicated to the armed forces and, and praising them and utilizing them. I have nothing against it, but there is always an appropriate moment to do it. I mean, if it was cricket, perhaps a few cricketers should have been uh, praised and some new songs could have been sung, but that half an hour was dedicated even at a cricket match. So any activity of national importance must start by saluting the great army that we have in Pakistan and for the men, much work that they have done for the country and that without them, the country would come to pieces. So I think that this is militarization. If you look at Pakistan as a whole, there are many pockets of Pakistan where there is no writ of the civilian government at all. Whether it is Gilgit or Baltistan, whether it is Zad Kashmir, whether it is Fata, whether it is Balochistan, uh, whether it is Karachi. So there are only parts of Sin and parts of Punjab left for the government of elected government of Pakistan to do some work or have some say in it. And that is also gradually going to go away.